So I'm Michael Huber, Ben Moore, in the flesh, and we are here with uh, Matthew Morris, lead campaign designer on StarCraft II. StarCraft II, Legacy of the Void. Fitting title, because this is the end of it all. This is the legacy. How is that going into to the campaign, just, just knowing that this will be the finale? Oh, there's, there's a lot of pressure. Um, we look at this game um, as this is going to be the epic conclusion, right? And the, the bar is set high. I thought from Wings Liberty to Heart of the Swarm, we improved the game. And now we look at this game, we know that this is, this is it, right? So we know we have to really hit this one. One of my favorite things is Warcraft 3 Heroes. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever thought about putting heroes into StarCraft in in multiplayer, like a separate mode, a hero mode. Has that ever come up in the office? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> we're actually working on a game mode called Allied Commanders. And this is gonna be a um, an objective base um, with cooperative experience, and you're gonna pick a powerful commander from one of the races, and you're gonna level this guy up, you're gonna get new units, new abilities, and an open-end progression system, it's gonna be versus AI, so uh, it's very much. I mean, we got a little bit of taste of it with uh, Heart of the Swarm with Kerrigan, right? Um, a lot of us coming off Warcraft 3, you know, it's, it's in the back of our mind, and you know, we have all these amazing characters that you've seen from Wings of Liberty to the Heart of the Swarm, and more that we're gonna introduce in Legacy of the Void, so um, we, w we wanna open this up for everyone. From a storytelling perspective, StarCraft II is kind of a unique project for you guys. Normally you tell a story, you have a base game, and you have expansions, but, you know, uh, Wings of Liberty, Heart of the Swarm, Legacy of the Void, in a lot of ways these are three separate games. As you've kind of gone on throughout this trilogy, what have you learned about telling the story, and how has that experience informed the way you're wrapping up Legacy of the Void? Well, you know, when we walked into uh, Wings of Liberty, um, there was a little bit of struggle. We had just come off Warcraft 3, we told a very linear story, um, and we knew we had to do something different, right? We knew that we had to inject storytelling differently in RTS, and it's it's kind of a difficult thing to do. Um, and so opening up this branch where you could go and explore and talk to the hands and the Tosh, and Tosh characters, right? Um, we found a lot of success out of that, but one of the things that we really wanted to come into Heart of the Swarm was to kind of steamline it a little bit more and just tell a stronger story. So we still want to offer those options from going to uh, arc to arc. Um, and so for what we're doing for Legacy of the Void, it's very similar, right? It's going to be a driven storyline, but you're still going to have an option. You're going to explore these different worlds. Uh, it's all about Artanis going out there in the universe and meeting these Protoss factions. So you're going to go to these very different exotic worlds that you've not yet seen in StarCraft. Yeah, and uh, back, to, back to all three of them too. You know, this is, this is a standalone package. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really mm -hmm. inviting to new players, which I love that they don't need the previous two. And then uh, also Archon mode, mm -hmm. just just being able to, you know, it's kind of a, like a coaching mode, sure. you know, but you can also have more fun with it because I love playing with my friend, you know, I play a lot of StarCraft, but then he's like a million times better than me, but then we can play together too. So so where did that idea come about for, for Archon mode? Was, was it more for coaching players or just a way for people to play just cooperatively differently? I think it was just more, of, it came from more of a cooperative experience. You just mm -hmm. me and my friend want to play together. I don't want to necessarily have separate bases because, you know, just like you said, our, our skill differences may be different. We match up against a team that's really good. And these two guys roll into my, my buddy's base and I can't stop it, right? <laughs> so now that by having one base, you guys can both control, it, it makes it a little bit easier. And the coaching thing is kind of what grew out of that. Mm -hmm. As we started playing internally, um, we started having people sit down and says, well, you know, uh, I, I play a lot of StarCraft 2, but I'm not really good. It's like, it's okay, let's play it. And all of a sudden, everyone got really excited, right? Because then they could start challenging the guy in the office. It's really good. And so, The Lurkers, fan favorite. Yeah. Did you just <clears throat> say, you know, everyone wants the Lurkers, let's put them back in? Or how did that, how did that come about? You know, ever since... You know, coming back to StarCraft, um, we always looked at the previous games or the units from, you know, Brood War. Um, and so we've always tried to look to see how we could get them in. Uh, when it came to this game, um, the reason why he's coming back in is we've changed how the Swarm Host works. Swarm Host was the long siege reign, but now we've tweaked that unit so much where it made more sense now to bring back a Lurker unit and give him the upgrade to do the to kind of take on that same role. So uh, it was just kind of a, a fitting unit for that at that point. Um, personally, I'm really glad it's there. We had it in the campaign, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, as soon as it was in campaign, everyone in the office was like, ah, oh, we gotta get it back, <laughs> right? So so it, I'm glad it's worked out. 
Dustin said during the opening ceremony that, you know, because Legacy of the Void is a standalone product, there's never been a better time to jump into StarCraft II. And I was thinking about that, and the, the world of Star, StarCraft is very complex. There's a lot <laughs> going on. Do you think brand new players that, that are picking up Legacy of the Void for the first time, they have no experience with StarCraft, will be able to appreciate the story and appreciate the complexity of the game? Uh, yeah, that's going to put pressure on us. Um, that's our goal. We want to make sure this is accessible for everybody. Um, there's obviously some challenges for us, and you know we'll, we'll get these things smoothed out as far as uh, looking back at what we want to do with the tutorial. Um, even in the campaign, if you were to jump straight in the campaign, an example of what we did with Heart of the Swarm was kind of brought a player along, right? If you're in a harder difficulty, you didn't see a lot of these lessons. You didn't see all the tutorial stuff. So we're going to take that approach um, as far as becoming familiar with the Protoss will be there. Uh, we'll surface some of the old tutorials. We'll kind of brush them off and give them a little bit better. Uh, we'll do have to do a lot of work on the onboarding system. Like you come on a battle net, you got all these buttons, right? We need to make sure that we have this really guided system that says, hey, you know, what do you like to play? Let's go over to campaign. Well, now you've played campaign, why don't you try this? And so we'll We'll, we'll kind of get through it, and um, I'm pretty confident that uh, we can make this very accessible for everybody, so. One last thing. Siege tanks being dropped while sieged. How awesome, right? Well, <laughs> how did that come about? Um, <laughs> you know, as far as specifics, uh, you know, David Kim and a couple of guys that work on multiplayer, um, they're, they're constantly coming up with new ideas, right? So yeah. uh, a lot of them that you're seeing now, a lot of the things that we've tried and that are not in there, um, where that originated, I'm not sure. You know, one day he just comes in and says, you guys got to check this out. Let's play this. And, and all of a sudden they're playing against us. I'm like, how did you do that? Right? So. Does that just spontaneity happen all the time around the office? Just, you know, you, you have a crazy idea. You just go for it. You see if it works or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a, we have a team of guys who have been working on this game for a long time, right? So yeah. they, they know the pipeline. We could get this stuff iterated really fast. Um, in a lot of ways, it allows us to be very iterative, right? We're not always waiting for the art asset. So we could kind of get in there and we could try these different tweaks. That doesn't change new art, right? Mm -hmm. It just picks it up and moves in. We're like, oh, we like this. And then they'll kind of come in and clean it up. So uh, yeah, it definitely allows us to be very spontaneous and, and get these things out there. So Cool. <clears throat> Legacy of the Void, this is it. This is it. So, are you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> any, uh, any, anything you want to say to new or veteran players or both? You know, I, I again, StarCraft appeals. I don't want to say appeals to the more hardcore, but it can be a little intimidating for new players. You know, finding that balance to appeal to both is seems like a monumental task. Oh yeah, absolutely. Is, you is, know, is there anything you want to say to both? Yeah, I would say you know if you've ever been intimidated or you've been uh, cautious about playing StarCraft II, you know, don't even worry about come back. Uh, we're going to take good care of you. We have a great campaign lined up for you. Uh, we're going to make it very easy for you to get in there. Uh, if you're veteran players, we got a lot of new units. It's going to have a lot of micro on it. So we're we're really trying to make sure we're going to get uh, something for everybody. Well, I'm just really excited. That's <laughs> all I know. Yeah. The campaign, multiplayer, Archon mode. Thanks a lot. Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs>